I'm thinking Springsteen's got a lot to answer for as well. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're probably not wrong. You're probably not wrong. Hey everybody out there, welcome back to another Friday installment of the Audio Files. It's Friday and that means it's Viewer Request Friday where the song we'll be focused on came from somebody out there in the listening audience. In this case, yes, out there. Uh, in this case, it came from a viewer named Ozzy ZZ underscore. So Ozzy, we'll just sum it up and call you that. Thank you for He's this sleeping. recommendation. <laughs> um. <laughs> John, the song that they've offered up, we've discussed this and the 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 artist and the song, and you've confirmed that you are not familiar with a band called The Verve Pipe or their track called The Freshman. Excellent. Well, then you will be the one to go off and give this a listen because I'm very much familiar with this song. It was everywhere when I was uh, a youngster. So um, go off. Give it a listen. Let Ozzy and the rest of us know what you thought of it upon your return. Can do. Will do. It's nice. When I was young, I knew everything. She a punk who rarely ever took advice Now I'm guilt-stricken, sobbing with my head on the floor Stop a baby's breath and a shoe full of rice No, can't be held responsible She was touching her face I won't be held responsible she fell in love in the first place for yeah nice start nice guitar i like that second guitar in the right channel it it almost sounded like the start of the sort of riff from um up the junction by squeeze -na 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 -na. but that's just me it wasn't <laughs> yeah voice is okay it's one of those ones that's a bit sort of the worst of overloading with uh he's really trying to get all the emotion into every breath and every syllable it's not my thing but it's all right it's, it's not terrible um the interesting lyrics though um of course some of them it was talking about, i mean it, the song starts when i was young so you know it's going to be nostalgic straight away um, and it does have that kind of feel looking back. Um, there's something about him sobbing and stopping baby's breath and a shoe full of rice. That kind of makes me think of weddings. Um, can't be held responsible. No, won't be held responsible, I think it was. And um, she was touching her face. Yeah, I've got nothing for you there. No. But it's interesting. There's clearly a, uh, a narrative thread in this. Um, I should do my best to pay attention. All right. It sounded like the bass is about to just come in, so I'll just pull it back a wee bit. I won't be held responsible. She fell in love in the first place. For the love of me. I cannot remember what made us think that we were wise and we never compromised. For the life of me, I That's cannot nice. believe we'd ever die for these sins. We were merely freshmen. i 
what's left and now he's killed He's drinking sobbing with his head on the floor Thanks so far to knowing how he never really wept He said, can't be held responsible She was touching her face I won't be It's interesting, um as it sort of came in with the shuffling drums um, and that guitar riff came back, I was just thinking, I'm not getting all the words, but something about it feels like there's a sense of guilt. And then he says something about feeling guilty. And there was a line about was the girl taking two weeks of Valium. That nah, can't be good. Uh, yeah. Interesting. And then that guitar riff has been... I don't know what effect has been put in. It's this wow, wow, which sounds really nice as well, actually. So, yeah, interesting. Hell responsible. She fell in love in the first place. For the love of me, I cannot remember what made us think that we were wise and we never compromised. For the life of me, I cannot believe. It was interesting um strings coming in it was very nice it's building i mean it really sounded very 90s and it sounded like those sort of songs from the 90s that try to be a bit sort of left of center but when you break it down it's a pretty straightforward sort of middle of the road song really just a bit rough around the edges in terms of the sounds compared to the chart stuff but in essence it's the same sort of thing not particularly the sort of thing i would gravitate towards though it wasn't it wasn't bad at all um i could have done without all these hey years in the middle to be honest with you uh, <laughs> that's just me it's full of like interesting like almost contradictions so he's gone on about we were merely freshmen like you know we're just kids we're not can't be held responsible sort of thing. But clearly him looking back and he said guilt at least twice, if not more. Um, he is kind of, I think, kidding himself because he clearly feels responsible. And there's some stuff about, you know, we're washing our hands and never compromise. But I think that's just someone kidding themselves. 
Um, I have to listen to this again because clearly the whole story is in the lyrics. I'm really caught core of them. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more to this, clearly. And hopefully, young Andy will be able to help us out. So let's get back and hear what he has to say. All right. So you've returned. You went off and listened uh -huh. to this this tune. Um, what did you make of this this song? Because I already have a haunting feeling I might know, but uh, I'd love to hear you express it. Okay, I'll I'll start off with saying this tune musically is not something that I gravitate towards. It's not as as we said before, Austin Powers like it's not my bag, baby. Mm -hmm. But um, I found it quite interesting in terms of I I believe there's a lot to the content and nar narrative of this, and as form dictates, I only got snatches of it, but I got enough to pique my interest. So song starts with this quite nice, thoughtful guitar. And I really like the second guitar that came in on the right channel. They only did like a couple of four note riffs. Um, but I really like that. And it started to remind me of the sort of main riff from Squeeze up the junction, which is probably a song you know nothing of. I think I've heard that name before. Maybe because yeah. of you, to be fair, like that's yeah, yeah. conversation. Well. Wow. Just as an aside, I think I might add that to my list for you. Um, folks, drop some comments if you want to see Andy react to um, Up the Junction by Squeeze. Bit of a British institution. But anyway, back to this. So, yeah, it started to be reminded me of this, and then it didn't. But I couldn't get that thought that it almost... It, it just This is a four-note riff, and the first two or three notes, just you expect it to go into this, but it doesn't. It changes. But the thought's there still. Yeah. It's almost up the junction, but it isn't. But it almost is. <laughs> so, and that kept happening through the soul. But anyway, that's my brain. So the vocals then begin. And you know when you get the first line of a song is when when I was young, that it's going to be a nostalgic song <laughs> straight away, you know, cards on the table. Yeah. Um, and with that sort of carefully, like, thoughtful play guitar, there's a, there is, they, they do, you know, what they're trying to convey, I believe, musically, is spot on. You get that feeling of kind of looking back mm -hmm. and almost like a a waft of regret as well in it. So that's like well done. I have to say the vocals have that touch of, especially at the start, that sort of, I call it nasal quivering, um, where he's trying to sort of like build in emotion to it where it, I don't think he needs to. It's not, again, not my bag, that sort of, Vocal style, but it's competent enough. You know, it's not painful or anything. Just not my thing. But the lyrics were interesting, and here's bits which I managed to grab out of the ether from the start. He did mention something about sobbing, but he was singing that bit. I think I was thinking about something else. So I heard sobbing. I heard stopping baby's breath, which I thought was an interesting line. I don't know if that's a a, a new a new perfume or something, but it didn't sound like it's a winner. Um, shoe full of rice, which made me think of, see, shoe full of drinks, a thing, isn't it? But you wouldn't do, you wouldn't eat rice out of a shoe. So shoe full of rice, it kind of made me think of weddings, you know, when they throw the rice and you end up with, you know, bits everywhere. Um, and they did repeat the lines and throughout the song, I can't be held responsible. I won't be held responsible, um, which I thought was interesting. More on that later. And the line that really threw me, which I got nothing for, was she was touching her face. Yeah. Yeah, not got that at all. But anyway, so then the bass joins in for the next part and it's sounding really nice and full. I mean, it's not doing, it just sounds good. You know, mm -hmm. it's not doing it. But it's a much needed additional body to this song at this point. And I really like that. And then shuffling drums, which are, again, perfectly competent, but just adds to the, they're just there to hold it together, aren't they, while he does his stuff. And the return of that almost squeeze riff. So this the singer starts to shift up a gear from what I would call the first bit is almost that smell the fart acting, you know, that Joey does in Friends. Are, you know, that's the way he's singing. <laughs> and, then it, and then it goes up a, up a bit into slightly more animated. And this is obviously a building song as it progresses through. I get that now. So there's more sort of animated narration to it. And there was something about a girl taking 
a week or two weeks worth of Valium. And then, and he, he said, it sounded like schlafted. I don't know if that's, I don't know if it's supposed to be slept or slapped or schlafed. It, the way he was singing it, it just was odd. So I don't know what that word was. But obviously, that amount of Valium is not a good thing. No. Um, just as I was thinking about whether the, I was getting this sense is it is the, is this guy feeling guilty and he mentions guilt I've forgotten the phrase but he does say the word guilt um and then there's this nice almost semi wailing guitar riff wah, 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 which is I, I don't know what the effect on it is so it's not like a proper wail it's you know a subdued one but it's got a really nice sort of almost like a, a beam going backwards and forwards sort of feel to it I really enjoyed that um it builds again the said guitar now growling sort of low in the mix and then some strings kick in alongside and it's all building and then the other guitar comes in the left channel and it's doing some nice stuff as well and at this point unfortunately the uh the singer lets loose with a couple of hey yeah which you know really yes. irritated me to death but he didn't need to do that shit but you know he, he, that's his choice fair enough so we have a little pause, pause, and then we start to build back up again. And I think I could hear some keyboard work coming in as well, especially when the strings came back in the second time, and again, it's filling it out, and it becomes more stirring musically, and the singer goes full raspy um, until we sort of quiet down to a reflective end, which is right and proper. Um, I got the sense from this and the, the amount of words that I got that there was a lot, it felt like contradictory to me in terms of feeling and words. I mean, he repeats the line, we were merely freshmen a lot. Obviously, the title of the song is The Freshman. Um, and that's first year college, isn't it, freshman? It can be first year college or first year high school. So it's like when right. we, at either level, if it's your first year, you're a freshman. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what I thought. So it's kind of like he's saying we we're merely freshman is just we're just kids yeah so as often stated not responsible we didn't know what the fuck we we're doing or whatever yeah mm -hmm. and there was a line about washing our hands which is a bit conscious pilot um however i think just the the very act of looking back and recounting and reflecting i got the sense that whether deliberately or not he's kind of kidding himself because something significant has happened here for this narration for it to be so such that he has to look back on it and it's had an impact. Um and to, just to say we're just, you know, we're merely freshmen, it's kind of like a throwaway to I think guilt that he's feeling and responsibility for whatever's happened. And some of those lines I have got the full context, but they're quite troubling, obviously. Mm -hmm. So I do need to listen to the narrative again. First listen, you know, I'm yeah. not great at catching the words anyway. But so I found that interesting and that held my attention as you know and i started thinking about what this all means while the song was going on so engaged in me in that way um i think the music itself sounded very for me 90s american um and it's that sort that was either mainstream trying to masquerade as slightly alternative mm -hmm. or an alternative band trying to take their shot at mainstream success and either it ends up the same effect and there yes. was a lot of that around and i believe a hell of a lot of that around at the time i couldn't name you bands or tracks that it sounds like because it was something that i would have not gravitated towards at all no <laughs> and, and so and i wouldn't you know but i i i'm you know i'm aware of it and mm. i'm aware also of the popularity of it you know and again it's nothing wrong in that you know it's just not my you know cup of tea or choice of starter or whatever um so you know i'll take the fish course thank you very much yeah um, but uh <laughs> but having said that i could see you get this ground swelling of emotion within the song and these lyrics which are very interesting which i think if i listen to a couple more times i get i could see this probably being a um a very popular song, probably a meaningful song to a lot of people as well. So mm. it's not to discount it in any way. But in terms of what I reach for, this wouldn't be first on my list. 
I said that. I still listened to it. I still enjoyed it. It was uh, it was a decent song. Nothing wrong with it at all. Yeah, I think you you summarized it pretty well. I mean, I, when I was like I don't know fourteen or whatever, when you know thirteen when this song came out and I heard it, um, e I had a different experience than I do when I've heard it. You know, the last you know fifteen ten years or whatever, uh, it just doesn't hit me the same. And I think it's because oh. like. Now that I'm divorced from the throes of the the latter half of the 90s, um, I've realized that there's all these cliche things that were used during that time that that was enough for me for a lifetime in a lot of ways. And the the um, this idea of masquerading as alt rock when it's really mainstream um, or reaching to uh to make the mainstream or whatever that venn diagram in the middle of the gray area in between there is exactly where this would fit in um right yeah and it suffers from something that i didn't even know it had when i was younger which was that yes he would that, that american rasp you know kind of like post eddie vetter kind of delivery that everyone then tried to mimic and employ in their songs and it's not till later that I've gone back and listened to that and been like, oh my God, they were all like laying into that so hard. Um, but the story and the like see, you said, see, the, the, this is what I've been saying. They have got a lot to answer for. <laughs> they might sell 40 million albums, they have a lot to answer for. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> so, not the um, pipe. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> we can agree to disagree on that because I think they've done far more good than bad. But that was one of the last, the negative. Force last for evil. Force for evil. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, the narrative still, I think, is um, really poignant and an interesting one. And um, it's interesting you brought up the freshman and what that might mean or whatever. I think it also speaks to the naivety of all the people mentioned in this song, of all the characters in the song. And mm. the, th that is emblematic of anyone in that age demographic you know anyone that's banging around that you know 18 19 years old fucking um, idiots all of us were yeah you know? yeah making really bad decisions and not thinking about the consequences of of them so i think that is the illusion to freshmen is also i think or the um the name freshman i think is an illusion to the naivety of the the characters involved here but um yeah uh they are the verb pipe they are an American rock band from East Lansing, Michigan, formed in 1991 by Brian Vanderark, Brad Vanderark, Brian Stout, and Donnie Brown. Though Stout and Brown would end up leaving the group, uh, Stout departed in 93 and Brown in 2014. Their current lineup consists of Brian Vanderark, Brad Vanderark, Channing Lee, and Lou Musa. Uh, they released two albums. Um, I've suffered uh, a head injury under the actually under a different name. The name was Johnny with an I. And that's like this I, not the letter I, uh, in 1991. And then 1993's Pop Smear. These albums helped them garner uh, a cult following in Michigan and the surrounding parts of the Midwest, which then garnered the attention of RCA Records, who signed them in 1995. And their first major label release was 1996's Villains, uh, which uh, launched two respectably selling singles, one more so than the other, but the first being Photograph, which charted at number 53 on the Billboard Airplay charts and then number five on the Billboard Hot 100. Uh, and then the Billboard at number five uh, Hot 100 hit The Freshman, uh, which was their most popular single, kind of like a one hit wonder when you when you really think about it over here. Like this was their big, big breakthrough song. And years after the release of the album, uh, a reformatted of, or a year later uh, after the release of the album, a reformatted version of The Freshman peaked at number one on the modern rock charts. The success of the song helped the album go platinum. And to date, it is the Verve Pipe's best selling album. All Music rated the album a four out of five stars and album of the year scored it a 70 out of 100. And now we're going to jump into those very interesting lyrics and the story behind them. When I was young, I knew everything, and she, a punk who rarely ever took advice, now I'm guilty, stri now I'm guilt stricken sobbing with my head on the floor, stopped a baby's breath and a shoe full of rice, no, can't be held responsible, cause she was touching her face, I won't be held responsible, she fell in love in the first place, for the life of me, I cannot remember what made us think that we were wise and we'd never compromise, for the life of me, I cannot believe we'd ever die for these sins. We were merely freshmen. 
My best friends took my best friend took a week's vacation to forget her. His girl took a week's worth of Valium and slept. And now he's guilt stricken, sobbing with a head on the floor. Thinks about her now and how he never really wept. He said, "Can't be held responsible because she was touching her face. I won't be held responsible. She fell in love in the first place." For the life of me, I cannot remember what made us think that we were wise and we'd never compromise. For the life of me, I cannot believe we'd ever die for these sins. We were merely freshmen. Then that, hey, hey, yeah, yeah. Um, we tried to wash our hands of all of this. We'd never talk uh, of our lacking relationships and how we're guilt-stricken sobbing with our head on the floor. We fell through the ice. We tried not to slip, we'd say. Because I can't be held responsible because she was touching her face and I won't be held responsible. She fell in love in the first place for the life of me. I cannot remember what made us think that we were wise and we'd never compromise for the life of me. I cannot believe we'd ever die for these sins. We were merely freshmen. And then that part repeats itself. So basically in, in an interview with exclusive, the lead singer and songwriter, Brian Vander Ark stated that the incident which inspired the song was when his pregnant girlfriend had an abortion. And in twenty in a 2018 interview, uh Vander Ark said it's the it, it's for it's for the most part a made up story, which most of the songs are. These stories that I come up with and I do characters. Part of the story was true in the fact that I had gone with a girl that my buddy had gone out with before and then I went out with her again and we ended up getting pregnant. Uh, and she had an abortion. But from there, there's poetic license and and that happens and makes the story more dramatic. A neophyte writer, a neophyte writer that I was, I ended up having her commit suicide and and that never and that never happened. So he kind of re took this narrative, like this, I guess, personal anecdote that actually happened to him and then kind of ran with it a little bit for the sake of artistic license and to kind of tell this story in a more, like he says, dramatic fashion. Um, and Vander Ark told the Boston Globe in 2022 that he hadn't originally intended to write the song about abortion, but that once he keyed in on the grounding uh, phrase, stop a baby's breath and a shoe full of rice, it allowed him to tap, tap into his ambivalence over the experience. Growing up in a very conservative, reformed Christian home, I struggled with guilt. It just felt cathartic to release the lyric into the world as a way to half admit my participation because I struggled to process it. The Freshman was one of several songs about abortion that were re released by male musicians in the 1990s, referring to RCA's 1999 decision to cancel the U.S. release of the Swedish singer Robin's album, My Truth, which included a song about her 1998 abortion. Vander Ark said, RCA did not put up any roadblocks, never talked to us about changing the lyric, never seemed to ever change. And I've always felt like the freshman was pretty obviously about abortion. Look, I bet that I had to do, I bet that it had to do with me being male and her running afoul of a certain code of femininity. That's sad, especially on an album called My Truth. When you have the, when you have that, this gutsy openness to, to get, to, to then get silenced by male gatekeepers in the, in the industry. So I don't know if that's a bit of like white knighting on his part, but I do think it's really interesting that around the same time, a contemporary artist who happens to be a female who wanted yeah, to write yeah, about yeah. the same subject matter gets shut down. And it's not yeah. really hard to extrapolate from the lyrics of this song what it's about, you know, when you really think about it. So, yeah, it's an interesting anecdote by him. Um, and, you know, I don't need to really say much about the subject matter and how it seems to ebb and flow in debate and, in you know, in the spotlight. But over here, it's become a thing again after 50 years, which is, you know, interesting to me. I guess I'll use that word. Uh, but yeah, uh, interesting story. Um, I, I And a, a really interesting take on it by the guy who wrote it himself. So I thought that was something that would, you know, someone who latched onto the narrative like yourself, that might be some interesting bit of information. If yeah, definitely. it didn't offer you everything you were perhaps looking for. So, but yeah. Yeah, no, it is. It is very interesting. And, and again, probably just as interesting is the sort of societal view upon this subject and how it ebbs and flows, as you say. Yeah. Um, you know, giddy ad is coming anyway, but yeah. Um, luckily we don't have that. 
particular issue in this country at the moment. Yeah. I yeah, thought, yeah. This exactly. was someone who wants to bring it up, but, you know, so who knows? Yeah. Well, but I mean, I say within this country, you scoop across the world to Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom, and it's very much um, an issue. And it's the Republic of Ireland. So, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. doesn't surprise me that much, knowing their religious history. Um, yeah. yeah. So, anyway, not to get too serious, Ozzy, thank you for offering wow. up this song. Uh, John, thank you for uh, giving this a listen and, uh, you know, enduring some of that 90s American voice <laughs> that was in there. Um, and everybody I, out there. I was just thinking when you were saying it. I'm thinking Springsteen's got a lot to answer for as well. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're probably not wrong. You're probably not wrong. You know, that's truth. Um, I don't know if it's like they treat it with the everyman or something, but yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's I'm glad it's something in the past that we don't hear much of anymore. Um, anyway, all that being said, everybody out there in the listening audience, let us know what you thought of the Verve Pipe, the freshman, the song in particular. Um, if there's any other songs that we should be checking out by them or any other artists, please use the comment field. It's there for a reason. We love checking out what you guys have to say. If we didn't, we wouldn't be doing these Friday installments. So, John, thanks a lot. Um, guys out there, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe if you would. We could always use uh, um, the exposure and trying to grow the channel. We can't do that without you guys. We really, really do appreciate that. And until next time, John and I will see all y'all and hopefully some more on the next episode of The Audio Files. See you later, guys. <laughs>